Hello and welcome to the tutorial for the Framfield dress. If you don't already have the pattern, the link is in the description. We're going to start by doing the bust starts. As you can see, I've highlighted the dart in the size I'm making, making two little snips at the wide end of the wedge of the dart. And I've popped a pin right in the end of the pointy bit. This is my lazy way of marking the darts. I then pull that through, that little pin, and then where that pin is positioned, I just pop a little pencil mark. You can use a disappearing pen or whatever you choose. There you go, just a little dart. That's on the wrong side of the fabric, obviously, so it won't show. And there are my two little nips. I'm gonna start by removing this pin, opening it up, and folding out the dart. So I match those two little snips. Just pop a pin in to hold it for the time being. And then I put another pin where the end of the dart is, the thin end of the wedge, so to speak. And I wanna taper this off down until I come off where that dot was. So lining my needle up with those two little notches, back tack there and then angling my needle towards the dot so that I come off the fabric where that dot is on my fabric. There you go, you can see it's tapered. That's what it looks like on the wrong side. We do the same on the other side. So there we are, two darts. We're gonna give them a press. Always press the dart downwards towards the waist. Both sides. Nice and crisp. Next, we're going to stitch the shoulder seams. So I'm laying my front bodice right side up and my back bodice right side down. So the right sides are together. Line up the shoulder seams, pop a couple of pins in. Do the other one as well. There we go, and we're gonna stitch a centimetre from the raw edge. All my seam allowances are one centimetre unless otherwise stated. Here we go, lined up with the centimetre increment on my base plate. Back tack at the start, back tack at the finish. Set, one centimetre seam allowance, overlocked, and then press it nicely. I usually press my seams towards the back of the garment. There we are, nice and crisp. So this is what it looks like. You can see the two shoulder seams there. And this side you can see the overlocking here. Now we're going to do the sleeve hem. Now I fold this up a centimetre and press it, and then fold it up four centimetres and press it again. This is to prep it for later for when you want to hem it once the sleeve's set in. Okay, so check which side is my back neck and my front neck. So the back bodice is on my left. So I want to find these two notches. There's always two notches on the back of a the sleeve. There they are. So that is the back of my sleeve. So that wants to go to the back of the bodice. Pin that into place. And the front sleeve always has one notch. Let's give this a quick pin. So we're just easing the sleeve head into the bodice. There we go. And I'm going to stitch the usual centimetre from the edge. Here we go, quick back tack. One centimetre away from the edge, all the way along the sleeve head. There we go, that's what it looks like. Just need to overlock that to neaten it and give it a press. There we go, that's overlocked. I'll press that seam allowance towards the sleeve, away from the bodice. There we go, that's looking nice. You can see the overlocking there. All ready for 
sewing the underarm seam. Now for the facings. That's the front facing, that's the back facing. As you can see, I've popped some interfacing on the back just to give it a little bit more body. Matching them up at the shoulders. Pop a pin in each side. And these are, again, a centimetre seam allowance. I'm going to just stitch it across there. There we go, back tack, stitch and back tack. That's it, job done. I'm going to press those seam allowances open and then overlock around the outside of the facing. There we go, as if by magic. Now we need to pin it onto the bodice. So I'm going to sort of lay out this neckline as best I can. And then I'm going to find those seams and match them to the shoulder seams. And there we go, put the pin in so that they stay matched. Same on the other side. And then put as many pins or as few pins as you need around the rest of the facing just to hold it in place while you stitch. The centre front is where you need to be super careful because it's got that point on and you need that to be as central as possible. Careful when you're handling your neckline that you don't stretch it too because it's very easy to do that on a wide neckline that's largely on the cross. So we're going to stitch from the bodice side a centimetre from the seam allowance again. The reason you stitch from the bodice side is that you need that point to be symmetrical on the actual dress so we can see that it's lined up exactly perfectly if we're stitching from the bodice side rather than the facing side. Nice pivot there to get a nice crisp corner and whiz around the rest of the neckline. So we've stitched all around the neckline now we're going to snip into the seam allowance. This is a very important one at the centre front in the point. You snip right up to the stitching but not through it. If you do then obviously just go back over it and uh, reinforce it. I like to clip the corners off as well. So I'm snipping about every two to three centimetres because it's not too tight a curve. The tighter the curve the closer you clip. And then we want to turn the facing over and push that seam allowance up towards the facing because we're going to stitch it down now right on the edge there stitch the seam allowance to the actual facing there we go you might want to press it before you stitch there we go i'm just about a millimeter away from that seam that stitch is going through all that seam allowance and the facing. Careful as you get to the point, give it a small pivot and off you go again. So there you are, that's the stitching. And now when you fold it, it folds really nice and crisp. There we go and you can give that a press. Lovely. So now if you don't feel confident about top stitching you can always just stitch right through that seam there to hold your facing to your dress so it doesn't ruckle up too much. Otherwise I'm going to stitch mine three centimetres from the neckline edge all the way around. I'm just using the guide on my sewing machine plate here and doing a quick stitch all the way around. Again the important thing is to line up the point there we go. That looks nice and crisp. So now we're going to do the side seams. Let's turn this top the other way around. So I've got right sides together. So the seams are on the outside now, matching the underarm seam. Put a pin in there. Pin 
pin the rest of the same. And we're going to stitch a centimetre from the raw edge again. Start with the back tack. Off we go. Push that dart downwards. Follow that curve. Seam allowance towards the sleeve and a pivot there at the bottom where there's a little V for the hem of the sleeve. Okay, now we're going to clip this. This is quite a steep curve. We need to do lots of little snips in there to get those to open up so that you get a good range of movement under your arm. So lots of close together snips. Oh, bit of a straggler. And one snip also to cut those corners off, reducing the bulk. And a little snip into that V shape at the bottom there. Overlocked, you can see I've pulled this straight as I've overlocked it, so that curve has been straightened so that you get again maximum movement under your armpit there. So now we're going to turn it through. You can give that side seam a little steam. And then we're going to hem these sleeves. Now this is where you'll be glad that you've pre-pressed this because you can just tuck it all in nicely, pop some pins in it and off you go. Obviously, if you're less confident, you could pop a tack in there. But I'm just going to go for it. And I'm going to stitch really close to the edge there. There we go. And that's what it looks like. That's it turned to the right side. Nice neat hem. Obviously give it a nice press and repeat for the other sleeve. So I'm going to sew in some inseam pockets, one in each side of this skirt. You can see I've got two pocket pieces here, one skirt panel, and I've put a notch in where I want my pocket to start. Let's line that up. I'm going to stitch this about five millimetres from the edge because my seam allowance is a centimetre and I want it to be less than that so that when I've finished my pocket, the seam lies within the pocket. It won't show. So that's the first seam. Then you want to roll the pocket over the top of the seam allowance and stitch right on the edge. You don't technically have to do this stage, you can just press it. But I think this is much neater and gives a more professional finish. So that's one piece. See the edge stitching there, and that's the raw edge. Okay, so I've put the other pocket piece on the other side as well, and I've overlocked just that little bit of seam but you can see there, the, the top of the skirt is at the top of the screen, by the way, so the pockets go downwards so that you can put your hand inside. So look, you can see the overlocking there just on that pocket bit. And now I'm going to put the front and back skirts together. Line those up. And I'm going to stitch a centimetre down and come all the way around the pocket and down to the hem of the skirt. So here we go, a bit of a back tack. 
down towards the pocket, this stitch line should come to just to the left of that stitching on the pocket. And then pivot and go all around the pocket bags, following the nice curve. And again, stitch right up to and just past the other original stitching on the pocket and then pivot, match your side seams and stitch down towards the hem. I'll show you this again in a moment once I finish sewing. There we go. You can see this a bit more clearly now. You can see the stitching there stops to the left, goes all the way around the pocket and then it goes just past and down. Now you just overlock it or zigzag it all the way around. Press your pocket towards the front of your skirt. And there you go, you can't see the seam hardly there. But you've got a nice pocket in your side seam. And obviously repeat for the other pocket. So this is mine after I've pressed it. And like I say, press your pockets towards the front so that they're going the right way when you wear your dress or skirt. All very neat. Next we're going to do the pleats. Now I thought the easiest way to show you this would probably be to have it all pinned out and sort of unpin it and pin it back so you can see what I've done. I've matched the side seams of the skirt and the bodice and pinned those together. That's what you're aiming for when it's pinned out correctly. You can see I put a stay stitch in those pleats as well so that it wouldn't unravel. And this is the one that I'm just doing now. So you want to mark the front, centre front of your bodice and the centre front of your skirt panel so that you have a little notch or a little mark to match up. There you can see mine, that's the centres. So we've got an even amount of fabric both sides. Now you should have little notches that you've snipped in from the pattern. You, know, you can see, you run your finger along to the first notch. That second one folds back and the third one matches the first. So you've got the back and the front of the pleat marked with a notch. So pop a pin in there. And then you move along to the next notch and match that. And then the next one goes back on itself. And then that one the sixth one matches up with the first one again. So you pop a pin in there. You may need to just jiggle around a little bit to make sure that you've not got too much ease in your skirt compared to your bodice. There we go, but that should fit onto your bodice perfectly and then you just mirror it for the other side. So once you're happy with your pleats and you've pinned the bodice to the skirt and feel happy with the amount of ease that's in there. Stitch your centimetre from the edge all the way around to join your skirt and your bodice. Okay, we're going to take the pins out. You want to overlock or zigzag this raw edge to neaten it up. There we go, a bit neater. You can give that a press too. And then when you turn it through, this is what you should see. Two pleats either side. Oh, a straggler. Neatly folded and the back should be the same. So all that's left now is the skirt hem. You can turn it up as much or as little as you want depending how tall you are or whatever length you want it to be. I tend to just do a centimetre and a half 
turn it up and I'm going to stitch on the overlocking there all the way around and give it a press. Sometimes it's nicer to have a deeper hem if you've got enough fabric as it makes things hang quite nicely. There we go, quick press of that. That's your hem. Which means you have completed the Framfield dress. And it should look something like this. Enjoy.